Welcome to Custom Read. Let's start with story. I discovered my girlfriend's cheating sex tape after eight years together. Almost three weeks ago, something shocking happened that turned my world upside down. My good friend Alex and a guy I barely know, Mike, stumbled upon a video of my girlfriend Jane in a compromising situation with another man. Mike discovered it while browsing niche adult websites and, out of sheer coincidence, recognized Jane. He reached out to Alex, and the two of them came to tell me about the betrayal. When Alex and Mike broke the news, I was hit with a mix of shock and disbelief. I couldn't even process it until I watched the video myself. The moment I saw it, I felt like I was going to throw up. I couldn't even make it through a minute of that horrid clip. The way it was edited to jump straight into the action, with Jane's face clearly visible, only made it worse. After dropping Mike off at home, Alex insisted that I crash at his place for the night instead of going back to the apartment I shared with Jane. I was grateful for that. I had no idea how things would unfold if I went home. We cracked open a few beers, mostly sitting in silence. Alex tried to get me to talk about how I was feeling, but I was just numb. I told him I didn't even know what I was feeling, like I was trudging through murky water, just trying to stay afloat. Eventually, exhaustion hit, and I passed out. When I woke up, the weight of reality hit me hard, I knew deep down that our relationship was likely over. I took public transport home, lost in my thoughts and probably looking pretty angry. I wondered what the other passengers thought of me, staring out the window like I was in some sort of Batman movie. When I walked in, I found Jane getting ready to go out. She asked where I'd been and why I hadn't reached out. I didn't even bother answering and told her we needed to talk. We sat down at the kitchen table we had built together, and that familiar spot suddenly felt like a battlefield. The floodgates opened as we exchanged harsh words, accusations, and blame. I broke down and cried, asking her how she could destroy the relationship we had worked so hard to build. She seemed confused and wanted an explanation, so I showed her the video. She broke down, begging for forgiveness, but I couldn't hear her anymore. Anger and sadness boiled over, and I told her it was over. That was it, she just shut down completely. She slumped over, still crying, but went completely silent. I felt a wave of frustration wash over me, trying to figure out what was going on with her. I tried talking to her gently but she was utterly unresponsive. Eventually I decided to help her to our bed and then went back to the kitchen to call her parents, Alice and Julia. I simply told them they needed to come over because their daughter was having a breakdown and that they had to see it for themselves. After hanging up, I returned to the kitchen, feeling utterly lost about everything that had just transpired. Her parents arrived in a panic, demanding to know what was going on. I didn't go into the details about Jane's infidelity, but told them she needed mental help. They saw her lying there on the bed, unresponsive but otherwise okay. They couldn't get her to snap out of it, and eventually I had to tell them the truth. I didn't want to do it without Jane being able to explain herself. I ended up showing them the video, and they were heartbroken. I explained that we had an argument, that I hadn't hurt her, but that the stress was too much for her. They decided to take Jane to her university's mental health clinic, and I chose not to go with them. The next day, Jane finally woke up. She was stable and responsive but claimed that the video had been taken without her consent. Her family decided to report it to the cybercrime police. They didn't press her for details, likely due to her fragile mental state, but it was clear that her parents felt ashamed and were unsure how to help her, other than following the psychologist's advice to let her rest and support her until she was stable again. This news came through her older sister, Jackie, who was trying to mediate. She asked if I really planned to end things with Jane, and I admitted I wasn't sure if there was even a chance to save our relationship. Two days later, James' parents asked me to come over for a conversation. I agreed and went the following day. Her parents and sister were there, and we all sat in the living room, the atmosphere heavy with sadness and exhaustion. They wanted to include my parents in the discussion, which felt disrespectful since we were adults, but I went along with it since I was too tired to fight. After all, we had talked about marriage in the past. Finally, we got around to discussing Jane. They informed me that she was stuck in her room, miserable and ashamed, but otherwise okay. She would stay with them for now, and when needed for the police investigation, she could stay with Jackie at a hotel. They understood I needed space, and they had already submitted a report to the cybercrime unit. I explained that I wasn't the one who found the video, but I would try to involve Mike. They apologized for what Jame had done, but I insisted that she needed to apologize to me, not the other way around. They agreed, but asked me not to argue too much right now since Jane was vulnerable. They explained the psychologist's assessment, a spontaneous nervous breakdown, no prior mental health issues, 
and it was believed to be triggered by the accumulated stress from her studies and the argument we had. She needed rest in a safe environment. The psychologist had even considered calling the police on me, but ultimately decided against it since there were no signs of physical harm. The conversation devolved into apologies, especially from Alice, and a lot of emotional noise. They wanted to take charge of everything, James' well-being, her education, and finances. I felt completely washed out of the entire situation. Eight days later, I received a frantic call from Alice in the middle of the night. Jane was having a depressive episode and had locked herself in the bathroom with a kitchen knife, screaming for me. That was the worst hour of my life. I'm pretty sure I almost died twice on the road and glad that my country isn't developed enough for highway cameras. I meet Alice and Jackie outside the house waiting for me. Jame has mostly calmed and Julio's with her in her room. They beg me to go see her, and with how bad the situation looked, I rush to Jane. She's a fucking wreck, looked like her blood's been drained and hasn't slept for a while. She starts crying the moment she sees me and reaches out her arms. Whatever anger, exhaustion and anxiety melted away, and I embrace her. She kept apologizing and begging for me to stay. I shush her and hold her tight. She eventually goes to sleep and I take a moment to think about what's happening. I genuinely felt heartbroken seeing her like this. This is not how I thought where we'll be together in the future, much less this Christmas. I am losing my best friend and would have been partner for life. This was the person who helped me through my depression when even my own family dismissed it. She's even the one who made me make journals to help process what I go through. It's actually ironic how she's the reason how good I can write down details on her affair and how bad it affected me. She's not evil. She's a beautiful, patient, and overall wonderful human being. Thinking of all the stuff we've been through, what we've done for each other, if I were to list all of it would probably reach twice the word count for my post. I love her and was prepared to be with her for life and face everything that comes with it. And she destroyed that. I wake up before her and go to the kitchen for coffee. Jackie is there and explains that she's had episodes twice before and this was the worst yet. All of us except Jane talk on what to do. Alice is in chemo for breast cancer, Julio runs a business 20 minutes away, Jackie's workplace is already hounding her, and Jane needs help. The situation is fucked and everyone is exhausted. Jane needs therapy, I implied mental institution, and that almost got my head torn off, but no one can look after her 24-7. They asked me to reschedule the inevitable and try to help her. There were definitely some emotional manipulation, but they are desperate. Due to my obvious lingering attachment and my own respect and love for these people I agree. This is where I fucked up. I go home, talk to Mike about the investigation he agrees to talk to the police. I call Alex and explain the all the BS happening. He warns me that this didn't sound like the right call, a mental institution was probably the best, and I'm just gonna get hurt. Regardless, he'll still stand by my decision and to call when I need him. I love this guy. I've already scheduled a consultation for therapy and Jane will have a different one scheduled three days from now in my city. I just want to take a really long nap and get away from all this. Comments. New Player 4. The unfortunate part is that she isn't your responsibility. I'm extremely jaded about this from multiple people threatening suicide to control me in the past, but that's an extremely common tactic. What I would do in your situation would be to talk to her parents, say that you can't be responsible for caring for their daughter and maintaining her health as she struggles with the consequences of her actions. If they want her safe, they should commit her and leave. This will never be normal. This will hang over any relationship you have with her in the future. Not just the cheating but this whole spiral, the stress of having to coddle and reassure the person who cheated on you is hard to break. It's confusing and emotionally draining and truthfully, you are the victim here too. I understand she didn't give consent to be taped, but that is a situation that is completely removed from you. Just as she is a victim from the guy she slept with, you are a victim of her infidelity. My honest advice would be to just remove yourself, deny being contacted again, and end it fully. You have to start living your life. Evil gummy bear, it seems really unfair the way her family keeps asking you to intervene and to be there for her. Obviously their priority is their daughter, but what about you and all the emotions you are going through right now? I feel like you need to cut contact for the time being and take some space for yourself. She is not your responsibility. She is a grown woman having to face the consequences of her actions. Like someone else mentioned, if you hadn't confronted her about this, 
she would have been happy to keep the cheating under wraps and continue with life as if nothing had happened. OP, yeah, I really need that space. Probably years too. To be fair, Alice and Julio wanted me washed off of everything. Prior to the knife incident, they kept silent about Jane. They understand I need space and are actually surprised I haven't said anything about leaving. They're just as disappointed and Alice wants to tear her apart but obviously waiting until she's stable. They've already accepted me as a son and was just waiting for the marriage and all of us can't fucking move on. Revolutionary T8722 If you are always there as a lifeline, then she will never get better. You need to leave her family and DRS to manage this, esp, if the relationship is done. Four angry dragons. Take your shit and walk away. She's not your concern. She fucked up and needs to deal with her consequences. Kenny Moose 32. Yeah you aren't married and don't have kids. There's nothing wrong with things not working out. Update 15 days later. So, it's been over two weeks since my last post where I got proceeded to get my ass handed to me, I'm not complaining, you guys were right. I do need to leave and start living my own life. A LOT has actually happened since then, but thankfully most of it's boring, sad and disappointing. Got myself a behavioral therapist which something I should have done a long time ago. I have different problems unrelated to this, that Jane did help me through most, but a professional really does make a difference. Gave me a lot of hard questions, important questions, that forced me to put my life into perspective. It was liberating experience. Finally talked with my own family about this. For context, I'm not very close with my actual parents, particularly with my father. Broken home and all that. I consider my aunts, my father's four sisters, who stepped up to take care of me as a child to be my real parents. So if I mention family, I really mean just my four moms. Turns out, they were more involved than I thought. Jane talks to them, she loved talking with them about me and our relationship, they got closer for it too. She asked so many questions about me, what I liked, food, hobbies, what my childhood was like. She'd ask advice from them about so many things, what to do when I get pissy, how to get my ass moving, all that cute stuff. Around a year ago when they noticed that I started acting positively, when they played around with the topic of marriage, Jane and my family started to get ready. Three of them have families, with at least three children each, so to help ease the accommodation, they save money to pay for themselves and anything extra goes to the wedding, to us, and whatever after. They even talked about engagement rings. Calling them disappointed is an understatement. With the bullshit happening now, they opted to give me half of what they saved for the marriage to help me out, and also offered to take me back again, which truly is a massive help. My biggest problem this whole time was a source of income. I didn't have a job lined up out of my city, still don't, and my savings are meager. With all that settled, I gave my employer my resignation letter, cancelled my lease and have by the end of the month to sort my affairs. I am leaving for good. As for Jane, I've gradually stepped out of whatever's been happening with her and around her. Talked with her family or more like told them that I'm leaving. Gave them info about psychiatric cold and made them handle her appointments with her psychologist and whatever else she needs. It was a sad affair, really. I know it doesn't seem like it, especially with Alice and Julio making me stay and take care of Jane, but this is a first time for all of us. They raised four great kids, their relationships are great, and they even extended that to me, even when they barely knew me. Jane fucked up the worse and this isn't something anyone can expect anyone else to handle with ease and grace. I mourn my loss of a potential family that I could have been proud to be with. For the POS who filmed her. I still haven't confronted her about it but Mike and Jackie shared what she told the police and how the investigation's going. It was a Korean national she says she met on social media for a fling. She said they only fucked once but that was immediately shot down. The video showed two different, distinct rooms and got pressured to admit where it was in case they can get anything like CCTV, social media posts, log books, witnesses etc, and that they did. One hotel still had recordings that day, two hotels with log books containing names and dates and their DMs. She didn't mention rape, blackmail or drugs in play, only mild intoxication which was all obvious in the video apparently. Everything but the recording was consented. It were some possible routes to take in terms of damages, but when a lawyer got contacted, it was pretty much dead on the water. POS being a Korean national currently in Korea mudded the legal waters. They can do nothing else other than contact relevant Korean authorities, gather as much evidence and wait. 
but the lawyer wasn't confident anything might stick. As far as they know, they have no evidence that it was even POS who set up the cameras beyond that POS stayed the night before, and the cameras are obviously long since gone. There are far too many angles POS can play to delay or even win any lawsuit that reaches him. It will be most likely expensive drawn out and with very little chance of winning. So they gave up that route. POS is getting off scotch-free. Why'd Jane do it? I don't know. Before, I didn't have the guts to ask her. Now it doesn't really matter. I'm not as exhausted as before and my mind's been clearer. I'm leaving for good regardless of why she did it. I can just walk straight out with no explanation or maybe leave a letter for her, thanking her for the wonderful time we spent together, the love we shared, and a final goodbye. I'm romantic like that. Still, I've decided to handle this with as much grace as I can. I'll help when worse comes to worst, don't lay blame on myself or her family, and not even mount pressure on Jane for ruining everything. Not for Jane, but for my own twisted sense of self-gratification, that I did all what can be expected and more. I will leave with my back straight and nose held high. Funnily enough, this did eventually show me how lucky I am despite everything. Yes, the love of my life cheated on me and had the audacity to throw a tantrum over it, my future's looking a little bleak, I found out so much repressed anxiety and anger from my shitty childhood. But I'm still doing pretty great. I have family that loves me, friends that have my back, and despite her betrayal, brought the best out of me with wonderful memories along with it. I have nothing to be ashamed of, and can say with pride that I was a wonderful boyfriend. Hopefully this will be my last update, if not, the next to be far more boring and less mouthy. Comments Medical Gate 5721 Better now than after marriage and kids. OP. Could have been, better not. Night Solar 240. When did the whole affair go down? How long into your relationship did it happen? OP. The earliest we have evidence, where she really can't deny it was April last year. It was three months before our eight year mark. Night Solar 240. Do you think she cheated on you before then or was this like some vacation fling? OP. Don't know. I really was blindsided. I do think it was a fling. I kept reading about infidelity these days, and I haven't found anything that would point this beyond casual flings. We don't really snoop around each other's devices, but it's not like she would hide whenever someone contacted her or would giggle about something while looking at her phone, but not show me. Not that it makes it better, it's still baseline fucked up. Kurzik. You shouldn't necessarily assume that this was a one-time fling, given that you wouldn't know about it either, if it weren't for being made aware of the recording. I hope you got the STD test mentioned in a previous thread. OP. I did, blood work, swab testing and pee samples. The whole nine yards. Only got asymptomatic gonorrhea. From where who knows, having no symptoms makes it hard to figure. Not much of a problem, told Jane's family about it, and both of us got prescribed some mild antibiotics. Kurzik. Only? You shouldn't have had anything if you were both faithful to each other. Unless you were cheating or it was dormant for many years, it sound like you got it from her. Unless she's as unlucky as she was stupid, that increases the odds that this wasn't her only fling. Had she ever been with other guys or did you believe you were her only partner before this? Riai Anamistan. Throughout I kept wondering how he knew it was during their relationship, but he does say they've been together for eight years, so I think appearance-wise would probably be how. The Korean national think filming with spy cams feels a little too on the nose, since it's known that in Korea hidden cameras are rampant. Then, this happens in another country, by the hands of a Korean. Future is dawn. The Korean national part is where it lost me, I'm half expecting this to be the setup for a Mr. and Mrs. Smith meets Jason Bourne spy novel, and her breakdown was starting to remember their double life. Road offer 559. Pure fiction. But well written nonetheless. Thunderbuns are go. The irrelevant details like wondering how people felt seeing his sour face on public transport and building a table on his grandfather's farm is where I stopped reading. Manamut Shannon. You're more resilient than I am. I dipped out at, we sat at the table that I built from scratch on so-and-so's farm. Such unnecessary details that it reads more like a fictional novel. Future is dawn. Gonna be honest I was expecting it to be one of those neckbeard circle jerk stories about the evils of women so I was going to send if to a friend to laugh at. I guess it's at least not offensively stupid. Hedeb 83 The thing is cliches are cliché for a reason, add that they talk about her studies and education, means they could well be in a university town and so international students will be much more likely, 
and could well have returned home. It does sound like a trope, but then if something is more normalized in your culture. The big thing for me is if he has stuck around and she rebuilt based on his presence, then even if he had got over the cheating and they broke up over something else her sense of self would just collapse again.